Before we jump straight into programming, let's have a look at the overall game's design. The first thing you should be aware of is that I'm not working from the original Smackit source code. While the original game code is efficient and has more more features than I do in this tutorial, um, it's also harder to tutorialize because of the way it's structured. So I've reduced the overall amount of code and uh, peeled the game back to its basics. The Smack It Light game looks like this. As you can see you've got the start menu and you've got some moles uh, cheekily coming up and waving and hiding. And as soon as you start you then get a grid of moles like this. You've got live score and high score and you uh, hit the mole and you basically get a little animation to say yes you have hit it like so and every time you miss you basically lose a life until it goes to minus one and the game is over so that's the basic game but let's have a look at it in a little more detail um, the first thing we'll do when we start making our game is create a set of types now if you don't know what types are you can read about these um, in my Teach Yourself programming book um, in chapter uh, 2.3 and the next thing we'll be doing is uh, creating some identifiers again if you don't know what identifiers are you can read about these in the free version of the ebook now the free version of the ebook you can download um, free with AGK so if we uh, bring up the browser here you'll see that you've got a couple of things here teach yourself game programming for Android and Windows EPUB and PDF so uh, this is the PDF version uh, the uh, the title layout and things are a little bit different and the chapter you want is 5.4 working with it with identifiers so if you read that entire section wording there yeah, working with identifiers and also learn about float strings and integer then you'll basically be ready for the entire of the next tutorial. So that's a free ebook that you can download for nothing as long as you've bought AGK. Um, then we'll be moving on to arrays. Again, if you don't know what an array is, you can read about them in the uh, full version of the book, which is here, Creating Arrays. And uh, then we'll be setting up the game environment. Now, the game environment can mean many things. Um, it can mean the resolution of your application, the speed of your application, uh, whether or not your application is designed to be battery efficient or accurate, uh, and even um, the physics environment. Now for this game, all I'll be doing is setting up the virtual resolution. But we'll talk about the re virtual resolution later. Um, once that's done, we'll basically go into the pre-game sequence. So we load the background, we load the foreground, we, load it, we create our logo, um, we load the moles images, we load our fonts, we create some lines of text ready to use. We then load um, our sounds, we load uh, some um, music and start it playing. That was the um, reggae music you just heard. Um, we then create our level ready to be used. We create our mole sprites. Now images and sprites are two different things. Um, images are basically assigned to sprites, but we'll cover that in more detail later. And um, then we create some graphic overlays. Now it's worth me pausing here to tell you a little bit about the graphic overlays. And to do this, I'm going to right click here and click on open containing folder. We're going to go into our media folder and double click on main menu and you'll notice you've got foreground and you've got overlay so I'm just going to bring up GIMP which is a free image editing program and we're going to bring both these files in so I'm just going to drag foreground in and overlay in now you'll notice that um, You've got some hills, you've got three holes, and the moles pop in and out of these holes. And now the way we create that illusion is by creating a second graphic, an overlay, and placing it on top of the original graphic, like so. And what this basically means is that the mole is sandwiched in between those graphics. So as the mole raises um, in and out of this hole, he's appearing behind this second graphic here, which uh, when, when positioned correctly, um, looks completely invisible. And this is how we create the effect of the mole popping out of the ground. 
So once our graphic overlays have been created, we then tell the program to activate the menu mode. This ensures, well, this ensures that uh, when the program first starts, it starts in that menu screen. Um, then we organize the sprite order. As I say, um, you have to have the foreground, then you have to have the moles, then you have to have the overlay on top of the moles. And we do that here. We basically organize all the sprites in the correct order so that they appear as and when they should. Now, next we seed the moles timer. Now, each mole is controlled um, by storing the current time plus a random value of time so um, if um, the game is five seconds into it um, and you want to add another two seconds to it then the value will turn from five to seven and then the program will basically keep checking and saying um, has seven seconds passed yet as soon as seven seconds has passed then the mole will pop out it will um, yeah, it will pop out of its hole, it will pause for a, a second, and, and then it will start waving at you as it goes back down. Um, we will also seed the speed of the mole. So uh, while the timer is completely random, the speed of the mole will increase every time it's clicked. And this is done on an individual mole-by-mole -mole basis. Um, this is different from the original game which kind of sped up in a very uniform way across all the moles. But I wanted to um, emphasize data management in this. So by creating individual sets of data to it for each mole, um, what I'm basically is allowing each mole to have its own individual timer, its own individual trigger, um, and uh, and that's basically it, and its own individual position. Basically, we're just creating a whole data set for each individual mole. So once all that's done, we then move on to the program loop. So this is the section of the program that just keeps going around and around in circles. So these are the active commands that are being called all the time. So everything in the pregame um, only has to be done once, and then it can be forgotten about because it's all in the uh, in the device's memory, and that's it. The active part of the program is the loop, and what we're basically going to do here is ask if the game mode equals zero. Um, if it does, then we don't do anything. It just keeps looping around in the menu, um, and it will keep animating the moles and, and, and playing the music and doing everything it should be doing. Now, if the screen is tapped, um, or the mouse is clicked, um, then we activate the game mode. But before the game mode fully comes into effect, we also set the number of lives to three, we set the score to zero, we set the game mode to one. This is the point where um, it moves from a menu mode to the game mode. We then reset the moles data because um, they will be animating on the menu as well by resetting the mole's position and data and everything we basically ensure they're all hiding in the holes at the beginning of the game um, then we're going to read the high score file and update that value so up here we're asking if game mode equals zero if it doesn't um, if it equals one or higher um, then the first thing we do is is check for screen taps if the mole is tapped um, then we speed up the mole, we increase the player's score by 25, we send the mole back into hiding, and we reseed the, uh, the, the mole's timer randomly. We also play that special hit animation. Um, when I clicked on it earlier, you notice stars flew around his head. Um, he'll basically be hit, be hit on the head, he'll have stars flying around, and then he'll hide back into his hole very quickly. Now, if the screen is tapped, but the, but no mole is tapped, then we reduce the player's lives by one. As soon as it goes to uh, negative one, the game is over. And that's what we do on the next line. So check to see if the game's end conditions have been met. Um, lives are, um, are equal to less than one, uh, which would be minus one. Um, so that, that basically keeps checking. As soon as that condition is met, then the game is over. Uh, this next line basically checks to see if the mole is all the way out of his hole. Um, this makes it basically means that um, the sprite will move up about 88 pixels, or is it 44, um, a, a, a specific number of pixels. Um, then it, as soon as it's hit that specific number of pixels, um, it will start waving goodbye at you and start hiding in its hole. And finally, um, now these conditions are completely separate from these if, if conditions. These are basically um, only triggered by, uh, by the game mode status, whereas these are always run. So no matter what's going on with these 
questions here um, these will always be operating so um, um, we're basically moving the moles based on their flag so whatever the value of the flag is indicates whether or not the mole is coming out of its hole or whether it's going back into its hole or whether it's completely hidden and uh, the user cannot tap it and there you have it that is the basic game design um, this is what I call pseudocode very rough code it's um, it doesn't give you any of the very specifics that happen that will happen later on in this tutorial uh, but the pseudocode is a good way of, of kind of getting together and, and, uh, and working out how the game works um, what you need to do what needs to happen within the game uh, and it will start to start to look something like this or at least mine always does um, so that was the kind of original pseudo code I was working for I'll modified a bit with the updated chapters and things um, uh, hopefully you now have a better idea of how the game is work how the game's working and the sort of various background processes that are going and in the next tutorial I will take you into the active coding part of the tutorial and with any luck um, now that you know uh, the basic framework of what's going to happen um, you can put things together more easily and uh, and understand what's going on in the long term not just um, um, the short term within the videos. So thanks for watching and I'll hope uh, you'll come back in another couple of days to see um, the, uh, the next video in this series. Thank you.